Greetings, ladies and mendigants, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one. Momentous, written by Matthew41. On the screens across the country, a woman politely but firmly elbowed a willowy man dabbing an applicator at her face back behind the stage curtain and took her place behind the podium. Endearingly plump, she wouldn't be naturally dark of complexion if she got more light from anywhere but a screen. And still... Pushing fingers through her hair speckled with silver, she carefully adjusted the microphone before bothering with the blazer that she'd hastily placed on. The shirt beneath was still rumpled. Good evening, I'm sure most of you already know me. I'm Georgia Wayland, head of the North American office of the Joint Space Exploration Project. The microphone amplified her notes tapping before she finally looked up, blinking bloodshot eyes in the lights. The makeup technician hadn't managed to hide the bags under them. You'll have to excuse the lack of preparation, but we couldn't let this wait. Dave, Dave, come here, Ahmed. I don't need to see every nebula HR would have words about. No, it's the background radiation. Come listen. David sighed and wheeled his chair over, plucked in the earphones from Ahmed's hand, and settled them in place. Louder than normal, find a cloud. Listen! Ahmed lifted his hand and glanced between the cheap digital watch and Dave's face. When Dave cocked his head and squinted, Ahmed let a grin across his face. It's repeating perfectly 23.7 seconds. Clockwork. Send the server, we'll analyze it. Georgia glanced over to the left of the frame. One of the several people behind the laptop shook his head and mouthed a word, then nudged the one next to him. Then one nodded and grabbed the wireless mouse. Georgia didn't pretend to know what multimedia text jobs. They just did good work making the project and her as its spokesperson look good. 23 years ago, we began work on a new scanners and propulsion. Eighteen years ago, we launched Hermes to test the more advanced drives. That was the most advanced readings yet of several Jupiter and Saturn moons. She had to stop under the applause from the front row. I can't take credit for that. It was under the leadership of James Mason before we lost him to retirement. Thanks, Mr. Mason. She lifted the black and green can from the podium to toast towards the cameras as the screen behind her played footage of the purpose-designed vessel. Somehow sleek and bulky at once, punching its way through and out of the atmosphere on a pillar of frame. The techs knew their craft. It dropped the landing craft on Angelia 1, on Iapetus, and then Angelia 2 on Titan. Then used Saturn and then Neptune's gravity to slingshot itself for its mission to take readings through the Oort cloud and accelerate, making hidden new drives and theoretically be proven. Behind her, now familiar, played telescope-aided footage of the Hermes shedding its shell of its carriage pods and, with the flicker, boost atop the violet-white bloom. A dozen people had gathered behind several of the low cubicles. Aside from the ones working at the computers, some were spending their break here. Some were working on a tablet or scribbling in a notebook. One or two were simply staring. This is, uh, I've never seen anything like this. Nothing like it at all. I know, said it through, everything. See what we can pull out of it. Audio, visual, radio, gamma, every spectrum. I mean, there's a pattern. There's multiple patterns, like a little bit of everything. And that repeat, that's the closest I've ever seen picked up by the inner system. Like a satellite runoff. And this bit right here. David's mug paused at his lips. He slammed down on the desk the same time he stood up quickly enough to knock this chair over. Save this now. Where to? Your computer, my computer, the server, the cloud, your email. Send it to the goddamn phone. Now. He spun and grabbed Ahmed by the collar, bending him across the desk almost to the main force of pointing the monitor. 
Those bands are... Isolate those, start rendering them in the way you can. Go, 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 go! He yelled across the office. Barker, get Georgia on the phone. Now. Hermes had been more stable than any of us expected, and it kept sending back readings. A lot, a little minutiae that, honestly, only the scientific journals are really interested in. Let's face it, that stuff's nerd crap. Quiet laughter from the journalists, aside from the mostly good-natured scoffs from those academic reporters. And the drives have been functioning admirably, faster than anything man-made has propelled itself to date. The screen twitched and the view of the Hermes cameras, drifting past distant objects through a dust cloud. The scales of space are always humbling and apparently sluggish, particularly compared to the numbers that now overlaid the bottom of the screen. Miles and kilometers per hour, switching to seconds, and beside them a small but slowly climbing percentage of the light speed. And then it broke out in the orc cloud and went quiet. We expected that. It's space. It's kind of empty out there. She waved down another polite laugh from the front rows. Until, well... Harbert shook his head. Dave, again, I can't print these. They're not just readings, not static, animated. Not the cameras, this. He gestured to the screen, and there's bright spots across it. A haze of representing the all clouds surrounding the bright dot, obviously intended to mock the sun. Others, further out, don't mean cameras. Here, Ahmed smacked his keyboard. The view expanded, and more blurs and dots appeared inward at the edges of the screen and then sparkled into color. The solar system turned green. One star further along, Hermes' path turned yellow. One on the other direction, then a second, then a third, and a flickered a red screen didn't quite have the color for. The speakers crackled, playing sounds of some of the analysis might recognize as a signature of a particular stars as they lit up and the numbers began marking them. And suddenly, the speakers were the only sound. Dave's mug fell from his hand. Georgia had to raise her voice above the press's rabble. She couldn't keep herself facing the camera for long, joining the reporters and staring at the screen behind her. She clutched her can like lifeline at this point, aching eyes forgotten as the stars lit up. Sol, green, now with the subscript 3, a yellow star 2, and a red 1.4, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't. I just don't have the word for what history will record today. She had to take another drink. Her mouth had gone dry and her grin was almost as manic as one star. Another and another. Half a dozen distant suns twinkled on the screen, green rings flaring to life and pulsing around them. But someone does. The speakers had been amplifying her microphone and delivered the same single word in a dozen languages. Oddly accented, delivered by an orator and tongue unaccustomed to any of them. Welcome. End of story number one. Story number two. Humans are weird. Percentage written by Betty Adams. Hey, little bud, I'm heading out for the little R&R. Dr. Sharon called out as he passed the main biochemistry lab. Want me to grab you some rock rat samples while I'm out there? The only response from the lab was a distracted hum, and Dr. Sharon frowned and strode over to the open door. He poked his head in to see the undulate. He was addressing slumped against one of the pair of two-liter sample jugs labeled solvent, running his appendages over about a dozen sealed vials. Rolls, Dr. Sharon asked again. Yes, human friend Sharon, Rolls carefully, finally replied. Want me to grab you some rock rack samples, Dr. Sharon asked. Please do, Rolls carefully replied, with an absent wave of an appendage. Something bothering you, little bud, Dr. Sharon asked, ambling into the lab. These containers of ethanol concentrate arrived without proper labeling. Rawls carefully explained, indicating the vats leaning against the far wall. The manifest says that one is 60% solution and the others are all 10% solution. 
I tapped them for samples, but all the equipment capable of testing the concentration is in use on priority projects. So, you just need to know which of these vials is the strong stuff? Dr. Sharon asked, strolling up to the undulate. Yes, however... Rolls carefully began. Give me a napkin and I can figure it out for you real quick, Dr. Sharon said with a cheerful grin. Um, thank you, Roll carefully said. He slipped eagerly over to the cabinet and held the cleaning supplies. I didn't know that you were able to use absorbent materials for that purpose. Is it your limited visual range that... Rolls carefully stopped suddenly with a white napkin held an upraised appendage. Every appendage suddenly extended in horror as Dr. Sharon tossed the fifth vial of ethanol concentrate into his mouth. Three empty vials will held Lucy in the other hand. Dr. Sharon smacked his lips and held up the vial with a satisfied smile. That's the one, he said with a nod, near ninety proof. He tossed the fourth vial to the side and returned the other three to their holders. He strolled past, rolled carefully and plucked the napkin from his appendage. You're welcome, little bud. Dr. Sharon said cheerfully, I'll get you those rock rats by tonight. Several minutes after that, he strolled out of the door, rolled carefully, shook himself, and hurried over the comm unit. I need to talk to a medic who knows human biochemistry, now! Rolls carefully cried into the comm. End of story. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting, and that may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or, if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.